Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G and we've been doing a series on reviewing and quality control and quality assurance and checking out all of the different updates that Zygu has done in their fourth iteration of the firmware. We've gone through them in order until now. I'm gonna jump around a little bit, but uh, I got you. Stick with me, we'll, we'll get through this together, I got you. And we'll start out with number six, the startup screen is changed to logo plus model. So let's turn it on. Hey, look, logo plus model, excellent. What this does tell me though, is that the logo is actually stored inside of the, I wanna say it's in the U-boot image um, on the SD card. So pretty soon we'll be able to have custom boot logos. So be sure to stay subscribed for that one. Uh, increase the maximum output power when externally powered. We are currently externally powered. You can see 13.6 volts here. You can see the external power plug there. All right, so let's turn it up. It, it, it goes to 10. It's always gone to 10. Increase the maximum output power when externally powered. Increase it to what? So does that mean that, that this is correct because there was no indication of what it was increased to? Or does that mean that this is wrong because it didn't actually change? Still no. Number 20, optimize display backlight adjustment level. When using the battery, it is a five level adjustment. When using external power supply, it is a 10 level adjustment. So you saw that we're on an external power supply. Let's change that to uh, display setting. This is BL level, brightness level level. And we'll put that into the, the big button here. It's currently at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It wraps around to one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's unplug it. There's the unplugged power cord. We're at brightness level number five, so it went ahead and changed that. Let's turn it up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we're at level 10, unplugged. Let's plug it back in and see if it gets brighter. Nope, no change. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is my not impressed face. Okay, number eight. Fix the problem that the x-axis label of SWR scan is not updated. Okay, so let's go into app, SWR scan. This is one through 10 on this side. And this is, I have the, the tuner on. Let's turn the tuner off. Not that it matters. Can't turn the tuner off while we're scanning. Turn the tuner off. Do the scan. Okay, so one through 10 on this side, and then down here, down below, we've got a span of 1000, and it is 6.971 through 7.587. And as we move the dial, the axis labels don't change. Okay, so let's change the span. There they are. All right, 6.663 to 7.895 on a span of 2000. A span of 5,000, six point, is that a six? Five point seven three nine through 8.819, 10,000, 4.199 through 10.359. Then we're back down to span of 1,000. 6.971 through 7.587. And there's, there's some stuff before and some stuff after. So yeah, that axis now updates. Excellent. The bandwidth of the first group of SSB filters is widened to 50 through 2950 hertz. Okay. Let's go, let's exit the scanner. Let's go back to general. Let's go to SSB mode and let's look at filters and 27, filter two, 24, filter three, 1800, filter one. It's supposed to be 
and I don't actually even see a way to widen the filter. I can shift it front and back. So I move the blue one, push the button, I move the red one. Hit default, 29. Okay, 50 to 29.50. That's weird. Filter, filter two, filter one default. It was not like that when I first started. I don't know how that happened, but now we're at 2950 like we're supposed to be. Well, 2900, not 2950. So it runs from 50 to 2950. That's why I said 2950, but it's 2900. So that was some interesting magic. Okay, it's now 2900. Check. Fix the problem that the filter is not saved after adjustment. Let's go in. Let's pick filter one. Let's pick default. So now we know what the default is. Let's close filter one. There it still is. Let's move this to something very obvious. We'll take the red one and shift that. We'll take the blue one and shift that. And we're now supposed to be able to push any other key to get out of here. So we'll get out of there, get back into filters. Hey, it saved it. I didn't notice that it didn't save it before, but could you imagine if you went through all the trouble to set that and then exited and it went back to default? Like what's the point of being able to change the filter if you can't actually change the filter? But now you can. I guess you couldn't before, I didn't look. What's next? Uh, the AGC mode indication string has been simplified and changed to AGC A, F, S, and dash dash. So right here it says AGC dash dash. We'll hit the AGC button, AGC S. F, A, dash, dash. Yep, that works. The added the current filter bank indication string fill X below the VFO frequency. So it says fill one there. So we do DFL filter two, close. It says filter two, DFL filter three, close. It says filter three, DFL filter one, two, three. It changes one, two, three. You don't have to hit close. I just was, I was hitting close. Okay, that works just fine. The LSB dig and USB dig strings have been simplified and changed to LDIG and UDIG. Somebody wrote them a memo. Somebody sent them a strongly worded letter. I bet it was smoking ape. You hit SSB and it switches to LDIG, USB, US, UDIG, LSB, LDIG, USB, UDIG. Yep, it, it does the thing. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe that was to make room for the FIL3 word to be there? Could be. Fix the problem that the standing wave meter jumps when there is no power and low power. So rewind the video and look and see if there were any jumps in the SSB meter, because that would be a no power setting, SSB, SWR meter, because that would be a no power setting. And then, oh, we'll go back into the SWR scanner. Nope, app, scan, and you can see it moving but I can't really tell what they mean by little power. I mean, the SWR scanner should be low power, so it doesn't jump, it kind of moves softly. Optimize the NR algorithm. Let's find a good signal. All right, so I played with the noise reduction for a while. It does work. I don't notice a lot of difference, but that's probably just me. And it also just says optimize the NR algorithm. Okay, so that might mean that it produces the same exact results, but in a more optimized fashion, or it might mean that the results that it produces have been optimized. But you turn the NR level to zero, and you turn NR on and off, and you can hear a big change just at level zero. And then there's zero through 60. At some point, you get to a point where you're not only turning down the noise, you're turning down the signal that you're trying to listen to. So, but that's, that's true of any radio. I do like the NR, it does work, it does work well enough. I don't know that it works good or bad or fantastic because I don't know. That is a thing that's gonna be a personal opinion of everybody that uses this radio. There are a bunch of links in the description down below, coupons, discount codes, even a discount on this radio right here. There is a video right over there that I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome.